All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another video on networking. This time around, we are covering Chapter 10 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols, the User Datagram Protocol. So the last couple of videos, we talked about TCP and its connection-oriented nature. We talked about sequence numbers and some of the handshakes that are involved. And remember that TCP was a transport layer protocol, which also means that it's uh, it's layer four. So now that we've talked about TCP and we've got our hands wrapped around what it means to be a layer four or transport layer protocol, what's the scoop with UDP? What is it and what is it there for? Well, UDP or the user datagram protocol is standardized in RFC 768. So that's a big part of what we're going to talk about here. And it's a great resource to go to if you want to take a peek at it. So it's also a transport layer protocol. It means that it's also at layer 4. It also uses logical ports. So we've got MAC addresses at layer 2, IP addresses at layer 3, and then we've got ports at layer 4. Also works on the idea of a socket just like TCP. So if you remember that a socket was the source and destination IP address, source and destination port number. And it is also encapsulated in IP packets, although its protocol ID is 17. There are a lot of things that UDP has in common with TCP. So if TCP and UDP have a lot in common and they both operate at layer 4, why do we need UDP? Well, there are an awful lot of instances where we don't want to keep track of sequence numbers. We don't want to go through all the work of having a a setup process or a teardown process. We're not as worried about congestion control, all those kinds of things. So UDP fits that spot where we have applications that are what we call connection-less as opposed to connection-oriented. Another way to think about this is command and response. So that's kind of what UDP is. UDP is for these short conversations where you sort of want to ask a question and you just want an answer back. So you're not going to send a lot of data packets. You're not going to send a lot of file parts or it's not going to be a lengthy conversation. We'll have lots and lots of small conversations maybe. Another way to use UDP is when we have real-time data. So we use UDP for video and for voice. And the idea is there that if we lose one of those guys, we don't necessarily want that particular packet back. Because you can imagine that if you got voice packets out of order, uh, it might make the conversation a little disruptive. So when we lose something in one of those packet streams, we tend to just sort of forget about it. So those are our kind of basic places where UDP finds a home. You ask a question, you want an answer back, or you're going to send a video or what we might call a real-time stream. Now, there are a couple of applications other than real-time streams like voice uh, over IP or video. SNMP, DHCP, and DNS, these are also examples of applications that use UDP at Layer 4. Let's take a look at the header for UDP. And one of, uh, one of the easy ways to think about UDP, especially when you're carrying, comparing it to TCP, is what's actually missing. You can see here that UDP is a very simple header. In fact, other than ARP, uh, UDP is probably one of the simplest protocols you'll study. There are really only four fields that we have to worry about here. The source and destination port, we sort of talked about those already. And we've got 16 bits allocated to each one of these. We've got a length here. This is the length of the UDP datagram, and that length actually includes the, uh, the header. And then you've got the checksum, which is the ones complement checksum. So it's very, very simple, and the top image here is the RFC version of the UDP header, and then we've got the one on the bottom, and I just did a Wireshark capture for you, and you can see that it's got a source port of uh, 10,660 and a destination port of 34,008. And this one actually happens to be part of a voice over IP conversation because you can see that we've got RTP encapsulated there. So just for fun, I thought I would show you a list of some UDP packets. And if you remember back to the TCP conversations we saw there, there's lots and lots of uh, acknowledgments in there. We've got lots of concern over the sequence number, some handshakes. And then here we've got two complete conversations in eight or nine packets. 
So you can see that at the top of this, we've got a, a DHCP exchange here, followed by a TFTP. This one also happens to be from a voice over IP startup conversation. My Wireshark filter is for UDP. So these are all UDP packets, although it's not as clear from the packets themselves, because I wanted to show you the, the applications that are actually using UDP. But you can see here in a very short period of uh, time, a small number of packets, we've got two conversations that went on. Well, that will about do it. Uh, UDP, as you can see, is a very simple protocol. Really, it's just there to give us the two ends of the socket so we can complete the transfer of data. The key part to UDP is remembering the, the purposes for which we deploy this protocol. And as we said, these are going to be used for that command and response, you know, ask a question, get an answer, and then also a real-time stream of some kind. So gaming, video, voice, these are examples of things that use UDP. So this was Chapter 10 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols from O'Reilly. Remember that I'm updating the books and I'm adding these two two chapters, TCP and UDP. What we're going to talk about next time are port scans. And, and port scans are something that UDP and TCP have in common. They're both targets for port scanning. They're both things that we, we can check to see if we have some exposure or some vulnerabilities. So that's what we're going to do next time. And then after that, maybe we'll spend some time with DHCP and DNS. Well, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for listening. And may your packets always reach their destinations.